Hi, welcome to LessonsWithTroy.com. I'm Troy Brittany Meyer. Well, this week's lesson is Volume 4 of C6 Lap Steel Basics. So we're continuing on in this series, and what we're focusing on in this particular uh, volume is expanding our chord vocabulary in C6 tuning. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you little two-note grips, um, other ways of playing minor chords, six chords, dominant seventh chords, major seventh chords, diminished seventh chords, all kinds of chords in this one. And um, I'm showing you how to think about it from knowing where your basic chords are, right? The ones that you first learned and how to use that position to uh, learn some other positions for other chords so that you can start learning how to move other chords that you learn all around the neck. So that's what we'll be focusing on in this one. It comes with three pages of tablature, and here's what that looks like. So as you can see here with this top line, um, I show you that six, you know, G6 chord, and I show you all these different versions of G and G minor chords, G minor sixth. And some of these aren't the full chord when you're playing uh, lap steel or dobro or whatever sometimes you just are going to be playing a couple strings or a couple notes and that's going to give you the sound of that chord uh, in the in the context of playing with a band so you may only be playing a couple notes but it's some important notes out of that chord that will really define that sound of the chord uh, or at least work if you're playing in a, in a band situation okay so print out your tablature set it on a stand in front of you and let's get going with volume four of C6 Lap Steel Basics, expanding your chord vocabulary. Okay, so if you have your tablature printed out, check out measure one there. We're gonna be focusing for a while on variations of G chords and G minor chords. Uh, so we'll be kind of working off the seventh fret. This is our, our anchor position here. So. If you've had some of my earlier lessons for C6 tuned uh, lap steel, you know, I've taught you the different positions for your chords. And here on your seventh fret, the very first chord, that's our root, that's our, uh, gonna be our anchor kind of from what I'm gonna be showing you from now through about measure, you know, five or so. So this is our G6 chord. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to take this position that you already know, right? So you should know every fret, you know, what every chord is from previous lessons. You should know, you know, what each fret is, what the chord of each fret is. And I'm just picking G because it's kind of in the middle of our fingerboard as opposed to C where it's way up here or open. Um, I'm focusing on G because it's, you know, lays about in the middle or so. And also it's a real common key for country music and other forms of music as well. Okay, so we got G6 here. We all know that, right? Now let's start building upon what we already know. Okay, so if you take your fifth fret here, on your third string and second string, that's gonna give us the fifth and the flat seven of either a G minor seven, it could work over that chord, or a G7. So because it doesn't have a third in the chord, right? That's just the the fifth and the flat seven of our of our G chord. It could either work for a G minor seven, you know, because that has, you know, a fifth and a flat seven in it, and the same thing for a G7. So these two can work for for uh, either one of those chords. Like I said, my third string and second string. I'm just picking that thumb and index, doing a little pinch there on my fifth fret. So here's our G position. If we just go, we go back there, that can work for a nice G7 sound or a G6 sound. So keep in mind where we're at. Here's our anchored position here, G6. Wherever your, your position here that you know, you know what that that chord is, that sixth chord, where if you strum all the strings, it's a sixth chord. If you just move back two frets on your third and second string, that can work either for a minor seven or a dominant seventh because it doesn't have the third and it doesn't have a B in it. OK, 
Okay, so... Let me show you. Let me take it now and jump away from the tablature for a second. If we went up to a C chord on our 12th fret and we wanted to play something that could work over a C minor 7 or a C7, we do the same thing. Remember, here's our... That's our C6 chord. That's our root position C6 chord on our 12th fret. So if we go... Move that back down to our 10th fret, 3rd string and 2nd string. That would give us a C minor 7 or a C7. So those two notes would work for that chord as well. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Once you learn your, your positions here, you just kind of let that grow, let your knowledge and your chord vocabulary kind of grow from what you already know as opposed to just kind of, you know, learning stuff all over the neck. If you just learn from, you know, build from what you already know, I think it'll make more sense to you. Okay, so those two strings, remember they work G minor 7 or G7. A minor 7th or a dominant because it doesn't have a major or a minor 3rd. The 3rd's omitted from, from that. Okay, now check this out. If we, pl if we slant our bar, a little reverse slant like that, to where we're playing 6th fret 1st string and 7th fret 2nd um, string, right? We want to slant our bar. That can give us the notes that would work for a G minor chord. Here's our root, G. And then here's our flatted third, B flat. Okay, so it's really good to know your chord intervals as you're going up. So let's just go through that. If we're here on G6, and like I said, it doesn't matter. You can apply this to any fret. Okay, you've got root, third, fifth. Okay, so this is in a, in a C6 tuning. But if we move up here to our seventh fret, you know, and I'm just kind of naming the, the chord tones here as far as the, the, how you would name them, the intervals, root, major, third, fifth. And then you got the sixth of your chord. And then you've got a root and a third. Okay, so basic music theory tells you that if you want a minor chord, what you have to do is you have to flat your third. So there's our major interval, root, root to third, or in this case, we're in the key of G. It's a G to a B. Now, if we wanted a minor interval, We're going to do G to B flat. We're going to flat that third. And as far as technique goes for doing a reverse slant like this, what I do, you know, some people bend their whole arm or their wrist like that. And they kind of twist it, twist their bar. Um, what you can do too is you can kind of grab the, the outside edges of your bar like that and then just kind of twist it. And that flats that third, so root and a flatted third. And if you notice in your tab, I've got that written. That's the third little uh, two-note chord there, G minor, root, and flat third. So I tell you in the tablature what the interval, uh, what the interval is. So let me show you that real quick, just so you can kind of understand where I'm at in the tablature. So if I held this up to the camera. That focuses in. Okay. See where it says G6? And then we, we go over uh, to this chord. And it says G minor 7th or G7. That's a fi the 5th of the chord and the flat 7th of the chord. And I'm talking about from your lowest note going up to your higher note there. 5th to flat 7. Okay. Same thing for the G minor. Now we've got a root and the flat 3rd of our chord. So a G and a B flat, okay? And then this last one I'm getting ready to show you here, that's another G minor, but we invert that. So it's the flatted third and the root of our chord. So it would be a B flat on top of it or below a G. So B flat and then G. So like I said, I told...